What's going on, everybody? This is DJ Verrett, the host of Life After Death and um, on DSN, Digital Soapbox Network. And today, um, my my new guest is um, the actor and a good friend of mine, Ronald Lawrence. How you doing, Ronald? I'm good, man. Man, it's it's been a it's been a, um it's been a journey since um since I've met you. I'm gonna give everybody a brief history of of how I met you. I met Ronald 12, 13 years ago. I just got out of prison. Um, I was on um I was twirling Verizon wireless signs, and I was at that store when when that couple saw me, and they were like, um, do you think you can play a convict? And um you know, and I looked at them and I said, um yeah, I I think so. I think I think I can. So they gave me that they gave me their card. And um, I went there, and it's at the old county jail. And I pulled into the gates, and they um, they greeted me, they dressed me out, and that, and that orange. It was a hot day. I think it was August of 2008. Yeah. And um, I met Ronald Lawrence on the set of Sons of Anarchy. We were playing convicts, and I thought he was like really doing time because <laughs> you know the way they had him hooked up. And um, it's been a long time, brother. It I've, has I've been. Growing. Man. It's been a journey, most yeah. definitely, man. Yeah, I but just want I, I just want to say one quick thing, man. Um, Ronald Lawrence been on Criminal Minds. Y'all watch that? The Mentalist. Um, he's been on you know Sons of Anarchy. He's been on Cold Case, Saving Grace, Bones, The Ring, Judge and Amy, City of Angels, Martial Law, The Haunted Sea. The list can go on and on, you know. So um, these are the kind of brothers I get a chance to meet, and we're going to talk about some real stuff on Life After Death. Fantastic, man. Yeah, I've been doing it for about 30 years, man. Mm -hmm. I came out here from North Carolina in 1980, mm -hmm. and 84 was when I broke into the industry, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I've been blessed to, to be able to do some work since then, man. Man, what made you get into the industry, Ronald? Oh, man, that was my dream. Mm -hmm. When I was six years old, man, I think uh, I found out Sidney Poitier had won the Oscar for mm. Lilies of the Field. At that moment, yeah, my life changed. I'm like, this is what I want to do. I was six, man, and uh, I went on with my life. I went to two HBCUs, North Carolina Central University. That was the first opportunity I had to get on stage. We did Ain't Supposed to Die a Natural Death mm. by Melvin Van Peebles. And, I know uh, Melvin Van Peebles. Oh, man, that, yeah. that play is deep. It's relevant mm. today, no, son, too. Yeah. And uh, from there, I transferred to North Carolina A&T State University. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I majored in engineering and played football while I was there. And probably my lower junior year, man, it was like, this ain't it. You know, mm -hmm. I uh, started working for IBM because they had internships. And in the process of doing that, I was like, I really cannot do this. But, you know, you always hear, have something to fall back on. Mm -hmm. And finally, man, it just got to a point where I was like, I got to go. Mm. And uh, I had like $100 in my pocket, mm. bought me a bus ticket, man, <laughs> came mm. out to California, you know. Man, I like what you said, so. you know, you were six years old and you had a dream. Um, and that's what the thing is, it's about um, not keeping those dreams silent. And that's what you did. You, dream, you dreamt out loud. I'm dreaming out loud. And you get a chance to keep the lights on doing what you doing? Most definitely. Man. Yeah. So yeah. what's you know, family man, kids? What what's going oh, on? Oh yeah, man. I have three kids. Well, I can't call them kids no more. Mm -hmm. My my sons are thirty six and thirty three, mm -hmm. and my daughter just turned nineteen. Mm -hmm. She's in college now, so mm -hmm. you know, they're they're adults. But you know, no matter what, they're gonna always be your children. Yes, sir. And you got to be there for them. So yes, sir. I got I got two of my own. But well, you got young ones. I too. got twin <laughs> girls, man. I'm raising. I'm a girl dad, basically. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying never never imagine. From, um, from where I come from to, to have something I never had. You feel what I'm saying? Calling, you know, I never called a man daddy. And, and this morning, my kids wake me up. Wake up, daddy. I'm hungry, you know. Um, so, you know, the premise of my show is called Life After Death. And what that means is, Ron, is like that negative values, the negative belief system, the negative lifestyle, you know, the negativity of what, you know, every man and woman has to go through. Um, dreaming out loud, you know, not not doubting yourself to become an actor, to keep them lights on, you know, dreaming out loud. You see, you see what I'm saying? Um, for me right now, I'm dreaming out loud with my, you know, with dreaming, you know, from life after death, you know. Um, what barriers do you have, brother? What kind of barriers? Well, getting into the industry 
when I came out here, that was not a whole lot of work, man. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a lot of shows going on. At that time, they had a few sitcoms, mm -hmm. and most of the images that you saw of uh, of black men were very negative. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you had you know had criminals and gangsters, and I think that was all part of this system. Mm -hmm. You know, because when you think about it, you know the the different things that we've gone through from the 70s to the 80s to the 90s, you know, mm -hmm. different presidents have come in, you know, they have these industries they've been developing. Mm -hmm. And in particular, you know, you know, uh, for instance, the, uh, the prison, the well, prison industry, yeah, you yeah. know. And in order to do this, they develop these stereotypes. And so consequently, either you are that or you ain't nothing, you know. And in my case... Uh, when I first got out here, I had opportunity. It took a while, you know. Uh, I can say I was blessed. I was never on the street. I was never homeless. I got hungry a few times, mm -hmm. you know. But at at some point in time, you know, my first my first uh, opportunity was at this place called the Inner City Cultural Center, mm -hmm. and they had like a Where's school that? of the arts. Where's that? That's on Pico in Vermont. I don't know if it's still in existence right mm -hmm. now, but. Back then, there were social programs in effect. You know, mm -hmm. the federal government funded it, and they would give you a stipend to to you know to basically study the arts. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I got a chance to to meet and mingle with a lot of people like Glenn Thurman, Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. You know, uh, Lawrence Hilton Jacobs, okay. Rose Patillo, um, uh, uh, Carmen Zapata. It was basically you know black and brown people you know mm -hmm. and these people have been working in the industry for years and what year was this you roughly know, this was about 80 this was this was about 81 what stopped you from how come you didn't stop why didn't you stop i came here to do something bro <laughs> and i was determined to get it done uh that was my whole purpose for coming out here and i felt like you know this is my god destiny mm -hmm. you know god put this in there to pursue this this was my dream this was my purpose in life you know to get into this industry you know i'm sorry about that yes sir. okay i wish um i wish in the early 80s i had that same drive i um i didn't have the direction and that's and that's one of the parts of the things of being a man a black man you know of, of being distracted you know um the lifestyle that i chose to live um i got distracted by the the property, the prestige, you know, and the power. Um, now, not everybody where I'm from made them same choices. Me, I saw danger and adventure in it. You know, and remember, this is the 80s. A lot of, these, you know, a lot of our viewers, you know, um, was one of, you know, some of them are youngsters, maybe some youngsters that's watching this show right now. It's the danger in it. I didn't see the danger in it. I saw the, you know, there was no consequence. You feel what I'm saying? When you struggle, how come you didn't fall victim to that? You know, I think part of it was like after, after the my 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 stint at the Inner City Cultural Center. You know, mm -hmm. I tried to stay down there a little bit longer, but you know, it was mm -hmm. it was no money there, so it was yeah. like, hey, you got to you got to work. Gotta you know, you got to you got to support yourself. And I started to work for. Uh, a, a group home, man. I was dealing with foster kids. Mm -hmm. And again, this was the 80s. This was when crack cocaine was tearing the communities apart. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised at the number of kids that were going into foster care, the mm -hmm. system. Their parents were either incarcerated or either uh, addicted to this, to this plague that was hitting the black communities. Mm -hmm. And the children that I worked with were aged probably from like 12 to 15. Mm -hmm. You know, and just seeing them and, and understanding that hey, what can I do to help these young brothers? I mean, because at one point in time, I was still young. I was still like I was like 21. Mm -hmm. I think I was like 21 at the time, you know, and trying to teach them and direct. them. the one thing I thought they were missing more than anything was their history. Mm -hmm. And when you compile seeing these negative images of yourself on TV mm -hmm. and living in a community situation where crime is starting to be normalized, okay? Uh, uh, you know, you're, you're watching your mother and your father struggle with addiction and, and in and out of the prison system. You know, to me, you know, that's part of the system. Poverty, mm -hmm. people don't realize that poverty 
is 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 an industrial system too. Mm. There's a lot of money made off poverty. Mm. When you're talking about social services, mm -hmm. when you're talking about foster care, you know, and people will be surprised at the people who are involved in this. But these children represented a great deal of money. So this, this is the part. This is your part in it, is is being a part of the solution versus the problem. Most definitely, mm. most definitely. You you these kids out here today i mean times have changed mm -hmm. you know dramatically but then again they've stayed the same mm -hmm. because if you look at our history as a people man we've been marching mm -hmm. and praying mm -hmm. and singing mm -hmm. and voting and marching and praying and singing and voting <laughs> and where are we at now we still doing the same thing man mm -hmm. we still out here protesting to be looked at as human beings to be treated mm -hmm. as human beings and 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 being involved with these kids man i was like this is foul you mm -hmm. know you guys are making money off of these children and you're not doing anything to prepare them for life mm -hmm. now they'll get in the system and when they turn 18 you gotta go you gotta go out there on the street man. so if you're uneducated mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying if you don't have it you know what you're gonna do you're gonna hustle and that's what happens you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. a, a lot of these kids, man, I mean, it got to a point with me where, the, you know, they actually fired me because mm -hmm. it was like they, it, I was like, hey. Man, man, <laughs> man. Um, it see, it's the funny thing about it. You know, um, you know, I, I love you, brother. And um, when I when I scheduled you for the show and the conversation, the pre-conversations that we had, um, you made me do my homework. You know, and what we're talking about right now is 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 the being revived mentally, spiritually, and physically um, with these. You know, especially in the eighties. Um, I grew up in the projects, right? Okay. I never knew a term called redlining. You ever heard that term, redlining? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, redlining is they're gonna look at to see what part of the community has low re, um, real estate value. Right. And once they determine that low real estate value, they're not going to give you or me a home loan for that area. Right. They're going to um, because we can't get that loan. Right. Because of what, what I look like. So during the 70s and the 60s, 60s and 70s, they got the thing called redlining. And right now, these places that's called red line, the red line areas, do you know what areas these are in? These areas are where the Jordan Down projects are, San Pedro projects, the Nickerson Gardens, the jungles. These and it's not just in Los Angeles; it's everywhere in Chicago. In, in Chicago, these are called the red line areas, which have low real estate value. So we're gonna put low income housing right there. This is for me. This is from what I learned the other day from talking to you. You, you know what I'm saying? Um, so so right there with low income low real estate value low income high crime but you can go there and sell a kilo over a weekend you understand what i'm saying oh i know what you're saying but i so, mean i mean you know i think that 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 this is why we have to educate these young people and understand them that there is a system in place mm -hmm. you know you might call it systematic racism you call it what you want to call mm -hmm. it but it it has the institution of slavery has just just evolved. I fell victim to that. You know, I fell victim to it that. evolved. It yeah. evolved through time. Right. You know, uh, uh, once the Thirteenth Amendment was passed, mm -hmm. right, right away they added these these instructions in it, where you know uh, that basically you could take another individual's rights away mm -hmm. if he committed a crime. Mm -hmm. Now, when these slaves were released. They 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 would they would get them for vagrancy. I mean, they had no place to go. So so, but but they needed that economic base, that free labor. Mm -hmm. So here comes the prison system. You got your chain gangs. Then they start leasing uh, leasing people out, leasing prisoners out to work on these farms and these plantations mm -hmm. to continue to do the same thing. You know, it evolved. It changed. You know, now the prison system today is pretty much the same thing. You got big corporations that are having manufacturing companies inside these facilities. Bob Barker's one of them. Okay. Bob Barker makes Bob Barker makes he makes from prices right. Mm -hmm. He makes he makes the soap. He makes all the clothes, the underwear, the t shirts, you know, the boxers and stuff like that. And he sells coffee. And you have Victoria's Secrets. 
You had J.C. Penney's. Mm -hmm. You had all these different companies and corporations that were doing this. Now, some of them drew out, mm -hmm. withdrew because they got busted, and mm -hmm. they said, okay, we got to pull out of this. Mm -hmm. But it's so much going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and see, people don't realize that this whole issue – when they when you talk about race, they never intended for the black man to be a citizen in this country, and that's the truth. Yes, sir. Okay, you know, even when you deal, when you go back and you deal with the uh, Emancipation Proclamation, you know, I don't know how many times I had to sit down and explain to people, this did not free the slaves. Mm -mm. Okay, you got to understand it. Only freed the slaves that were in the rebellious uh, part, of the Confederacy. Right? Mm -hmm. Do you really think that they're gonna let the slaves go? Because someone who don't even, they don't even recognize as their leader mm -hmm. says, you got to let them go. Mm -hmm. But there were still slaves in the north, okay? Mm -hmm. There were still slaves in the Midwest, and they were not free. Mm -hmm. You know, this, 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 this whole thing to me, I mean, black people represent trillions of dollars of money. And Turns it's all out. about money. Yes, this is an economic system, man. You, you, you got... You got, for instance, social services. We're talking, we're talking about poverty, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know that Northrop, okay, now they make, what, tanks and stuff like mm -hmm. that? They make big money off the social services system. Man, let me tell you about that. When I, when I was in the penitentiary, um, they got in the, in the factories, in the factories that they have, they made in Phoenix, Arizona, FCI Phoenix, um, the factories make circuit boards for tanks and jets. Yes. And, you know, it was like, they teach you how to, you know, solder and stuff like that. But, you know, you ask, ask the former, you know, what's this for? Actually, that's for a tank. And that's for the tank navigation. Microsoft, computer chips, everything. And, you, you know? and, you get, and they're getting paid, what, um, six cents an hour. Wow. For making computer chips. And, and, and they're, they're putting tanks and aircraft carriers and jets. And um, it's part of that, um, what they call, it's called a, a machine a mechanism right and right now it's being broken see we talk about not just the prison the physical prison but it's that prison of the own of the self-making prison of self-construction and we have to free that free that through education and empowerment like the cats i work with like these youngsters you know um i didn't have what they have you know i, I didn't have that willingness but now these because again you know i had to, a lot of stuff so that 20 years that they gave me, that 17 that I did off, it didn't break me. It actually made me who I am today. So that's why it's like life after death. And what I want and what you're doing, you're more than just, you're more than just an actor. You're an advocate and you're an activist. You know, when, when I first met you with them tattoos that they put on your face and the orange jumpsuit and sliding them cell phones and walking in the yard and got me hitting people in the hospital. Now, this is all on TV. It's all, <laughs> it's all pretend, you know. But the stuff that you had me doing um, in the penitentiary on that TV show, for, I mean, it, 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 it bothered me for a second. You know what I'm saying? Because months ago... I was in that environment, and now I'm back in the environment, but with TV cameras on me, and you calling the shots. See, you had the, you had the the power, the prestige, and the influence to go tell somebody on a TV show to go hit this. This is a part of the script. Go hit him. Now the thing is now, is having your influence your prestige, your experience to go out there to educate, and we're gonna use this platform also to go out there and educate so they can live life after death. And this is not just people that look like me, it's people who's lived this lifestyle of, of hopelessness and, and, and being dispirited. I can still I can still do my thing and, and have fun, enjoy life, but I ain't gotta cross that line no more. You know, like like the homie show, you know, on the line. So right? you you evolving. Evolving. And and, and and you're part of this revolution. Mm -hmm. But before you can have a revolution, you gotta have revelation. Say that See, again. Before you can have a revolution, you gotta have revelation. Yes, sir. That's something that that, that took place in you. Mm -hmm. You understood that, wait a minute. I, I'm I'm part of the problem instead of being part of the solution. I didn't get distracted, Ron. 
I did I didn't get distracted. Even when they sent me that check, I still didn't get distracted, you know. Um and that's the thing is that a lot of people get distracted. How come you didn't get distracted? You know, again, and I'll say this again, I felt like it was my God destiny, mm -hmm. a purpose. Plus, uh, I'm a historian, man. I, I really... You, that's, had, that's, you had me in the books the other day. That, you know that's you. my thing, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And and I always felt like education, uh, and when I say education, I'm mm -hmm. talking about know thyself. Mm -hmm. You had to know where you came from and who you were. And unfortunately, that wasn't, that's not a story that's been told mm -hmm. to a lot of these young kids out here, you know? And, and, and working with these foster kids, that's one thing I saw, you know? Mm -hmm. A lot of these kids at 15 years old, and they're reading on the third grade level. And nobody's trying to teach them, they're socially promoting them through the system because all they represent to them is money. Mm -hmm. You know, at the same time, you know, this was the 80s. And, and I remember there was a funeral home off Crenshaw, man, and, and these kids were talking about planning their funerals at 14, mm. 15, 16 years old. And it was like, you know, they didn't expect to live past their 20s because of the, the, the gang wars, the different activities that were going on. And, and I'm like, you know, th this has got to change. And always, you got to understand that you mean something. You have a purpose mm. for being on this earth. You know, but people can be distressed by the situation that they live in. And when you live in a, a, a situation, you in abject poverty, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You seeing death yeah. and murder on the streets and you watching your parents, you know, yeah. go through the things that you're going through. That's not normal. You know, <laughs> nowadays they talk about PTSD, man. They've been talking about it with, with, these, with these white kids, right? Mm -hmm. But they never thought that these black kids that are walking down the street and you see somebody get popped and they die right in front of you. You mm. know you know what I'm saying? Somebody get their head blown. That's traumatic, man. Traumatic, man. I remember um, you bringing up memories. When I was in USP Florence in Colorado, um, there was this cat that lived two, um, two doors down, two cells down from me, and we used to play chess all the time. I didn't know how powerful he was, you know. Um, it was snowing, we walked out, we slipped and we fell in the snow. And there was a whole bunch of cats ran up on us and his name was Wallace Ford. He was the founder of the Rukins. I'm like, he's like, if you, you see this cat ghost right here, show him love. He pretty good in chess. That's why I learned how to play chess with, with, from the founder of the biggest gang in Chicago, right? And we would sit back, you know, drink drink that coffee, drink that mug, which I'm drinking right now, that strong ass coffee. Um, and he was like, "Man, I wish I wish I could have." It all started with education, empowerment for the community. But then narcotics came into play and figured out they can make this money, right? And it changed the whole dynamics. Um, education and empowerment, you know. Um, when I um, I was I was extremely blessed to meet men like you um, in my in, in this journey. I met other people, um, and it's like I don't seek it out. It just it comes to you. You attract to yourself. It's the laws of it's the laws of attraction, right? I lived in the studio apartment, probably about a little bigger than the bathroom. I didn't know what to do with the with the with the abundance that I had, right? That, that I had acquired because I know how to live in a small area. A small I know how to keep everything that I own in a small little box. I know how to do that. I did that for 17 years. But um on my books, you know, my books were fat basically, you know. But I just didn't need stuff. Um so I hooked up with these one cats and they they educated me man not on stocks and bonds and 401ks they introduced me to a thing called the index fund and they said if you want he said how much money you got in the bank i said he said it's, it's only drawn half a percent of interest so five dollars on every hundred dollars um so at the end of the year I, i'm i'm you know, interest, I'm, I'm only gaining a hundred and something dollars, you know. 
show me this on on index funds you know not 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 nasdaq but neutral fund i mean index funds american um trans america prudential he said if you trust me i will show you how to work this so therefore the bread that i did have i put into these index funds at six percent a year twelve percent a year and i kept on banking 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 so when it was time for me to make this change i i made the change now here comes the thing now i did 17 years right now you were young when this happened too, i was man. young i was young i you did were, you were how old? i was 19. 19 okay. so before i met you i was still living in that studio apartment when i met you on the set of sons of anarchy my mentor, his name is Norm. He said, I'm going to show you how to work this. He showed me how to work it, man. I went up, um, real estate was down, because remember it's 2008, you know, um, 2012, it's, it's, it's coming out. Education-wise, I didn't, I didn't understand what red line meant until I spoke with you the other day. Well, um, I went and bought a house in the Pacific Palisades. I'm blessed. It was good. It was a good area. I got a great deal on it. You see what I'm saying? I go back to the neighborhood. My homies think I'm in the game. I'm like, nah, dog. I'm, 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 I'm in there. I said, man, you, I'm, you spend how much? How much that low rider cost you? I said, man, you put that in right there, man. And I said, in five years, man, it'll triple that. I need. I said, man, one thing that I learned is I, know, I got patience. I got patience. I know how to wait now. And that's the game that I got. And that's the game that I give away. Is man, you spending thirty thousand on a on a low rider. I'm gonna teach you how to take that thirty five thousand or thirty thousand, whatever it may be, and put it right here. So ten years down the line, you forget about that money and it's gonna continue to flip and flip and flip and you can't lose. And this is the kind of stuff I is about education, like you were saying. It's education I didn't know, so I'm gonna give it away. You dig what I'm saying? I'm, I'm gonna give this stuff away. So cats like, how you doing? What you doing from doing where you been? You know, it's like education. It's that high vibration, high frequency, and this is what you're bringing to the table because I think from your education you can grab people's attention. You grab people's attention from where you've been. You saw, you know the struggle, and now you are living life after after that mental death, right? And you an example, brother. Well, I appreciate that. You, man. you, you, an example, man. Well, I tell you, man. So you, because I heard your podcast mm -hmm. that you did, man, mm -hmm. and I'm saying to myself, this brother woke something up in me again. Mm -hmm. You know, because as you get older, you mm -hmm. get to an age, and you start looking at life totally different. You mm -hmm. know, when your children are grown, and and you can't do all the things you used to, you go, man. Okay, I still got a purpose. There's still things that I need to yeah. do. You know, but at the same time. You're not moving like you used to move. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you're not you're not hustling like you need mm -hmm. to hustle. And then I I, I see you. Uh, you wrote your book. You know what I mean? I'm saying this brother is still grabbing at it. He's still pushing at it. Mm -hmm. And then when we had that conversation and I listened to your podcast, I went, "This is deep." Mm -hmm. Remember, I told you that that like it's like everything is relative. Yeah. I mean, even though. I can't say I was ever, you know, in, in, in prison or anything like that. Self-making, you know what I'm saying. Self-construction. What you said, mm -hmm. you know, it appealed to me. It 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 rejuvenated something inside of me. Mm -hmm. And I think that any time that someone can get out and be an example with their life, mm -hmm. you know, it's gonna pick somebody else up. Mm -hmm. You know, because we we fighting a lot of stuff mm -hmm. in our communities. We fighting generational curses. That, Speak on that. that people what, don't want to do. What's deal a generational with? curse? Educa educate everybody with generational, generational curses are 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 basically uh, being institutionalized, being being mistreated. You get to a point where you know. I'll, I'll give you an example. During slavery, at some point in time, they could no longer bring slaves over to America. The mm. British uh, uh, eliminated the you know that bringing them across sea, mm -hmm. so they had to start breeding them. Mm. Okay, because they treated us like animals. We mm. were cattle. They mm. called us chattel. Mm. Baltimore 
was a place where they bred mm -hmm. slaves. Okay? So basically, you'd have male and females. And the whole, you remember how when you were coming up, you might hear, put a bag over her head or something like that, put a bag over your head? They were mm -hmm. actually breeding fathers with daughters and mothers with sons. Mm -hmm. I mean, to get this strand of, of, you know what I mean, of worker that they wanted. Okay? Now, if you look at things now, Baltimore has one of the highest rates of incest. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Okay, that that is a generational curse. You breed incest into uh, a society. I mean, you you look at uh, Native Americans. One of the things that they 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 did with them was they alcohol, alcoholism became like a generational curse for them. You see what I'm saying? Genetic inheritance. And and, and when you when you look at like the, uh, there was a movie, The Godfather. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you know, I'm just using this as an example. Uh, when they were talking about uh, introducing drugs, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and it might have went over a lot of people's heads, but I'm like, this is deep. You know, they said, you know what he said? He said, he said, give it to the niggas. They have no souls. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And if you think about it, you know, I mean, our, our people have dealt with all kinds of drugs. You know, you talking about heroin. You know, the crack cocaine epidemic, it's almost like it was aimed at our communities. And then that is it, it's, it's like a child being born with crack in the system. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, you grow up and you have to deal with all of this madness that's going on inside. Sometimes you don't know why. A lot of the kids that I was, the foster kids mm -hmm. were those kids, you know. And, and I remember times, man, these kids would just, they lose it, brother. I mean, foaming at the mouth. I'm like, is this a demonist boy or what, mm -hmm. you know? And, and you start to realize, you know, this is that curse. We have been cursed by America. And it's just the truth. What's happening right now is a revolution that's taking place. I think it's going to go further than it ever did now because there was a revelation. You know, it's not just, you know, you look in the streets now, the protests that are going on, you don't just see you know, black people out here protesting, do you? Mm -hmm. The variety is you see everybody diverse, diverse group of people protesting. Because people are starting to have a revelation about what it's it's been about money, man. You know, mm -hmm. the elitists in this in this country have served mammon. They don't they think themselves to be a god, you know? Mm -hmm. They've set up these systems, uh, you know, to deliberately hold people back. I mean, we had when when, when before integration. Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, I came from Durham, North Carolina. At one point in time, we mm -hmm. had the highest income per capita in the nation, okay, for black people. You know, you had your own banks, your own schools, your own universities. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You educated your children. That money was circulating that community over and over again before it went out. The minute integration hit, that stopped. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, everybody was like, okay, I'm going to the store because I can go now to the white man's store mm -hmm. and spend my money. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? The Negro League Baseball is a prime example of what, what happened with that. Mm -hmm. Negro League Baseball was was deep. Them brothers played some ball, man. Mm -hmm. Josh Gibson and all that. Okay, guys, right? and they made some money. Yeah. But the minute that baseball was integrated, Jackie Robinson started playing. Everybody wanted to see Jackie, you know, play. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the Negro League, you know, it, it went down. Not only that. But I really think, you know, somebody posed a question to me, do you think integration was a bad thing for for black people in America? And I have to say yes. Mm, why? Why? Because it broke down our social, economic, and moral system. Mm -hmm. Really. You know, it didn't benefit black people. I mean, even Martin Luther King mm -hmm. started to see this. See, when we ever when people talk about Martin Mm -hmm. All they, all you want to, hear, all you ever hear is the "I have a dream" speech, mm -hmm. right? Martin was deeper than that, man. Mm -hmm. Martin, Martin, he he saw what was going on, and that's when they took him out. He began to change. He, you know, back mm -hmm. then they were actually bringing farmers over from Europe and giving them land, and and giving them low income, you know, uh, loans, and they would not allow black farmers who had been here forever to have these things. 
You know, mm. look at look at the communities even when you were growing up. You know, it's hard for a, a black man to go out here and get a or woman to go out here back in the day and get a low man, interest loan. I can tell you, but everybody else coming in, mm. you know, from all kinds of places and getting loans and putting up liquor stores in in the black community mm. and and selling us everything. Mm. You see what I'm saying? There was a store I went to. Um, I was telling I was telling um, the host of um, Junior, the host of On the Line. Um, that went to the store and um it's in it's in the you know it's in the black you know in the black communities you know i walked inside you know i frequent the store and um it's on the the donut shop right next to it the store the donut shop the gas station um the cleaners um it, it ain't owned by nobody in that community not one of them stores not one of them stores why don't we own businesses in our in, the, in our own communities why don't we have that donut shop in the community why don't we have that corner that corner store you know that neighborhood market in our community there's something going on that i was watching i was watching um a tv show on netflix with tracy morgan Right, and I'm watching the show, and um, there was a building. They were making these new apartment buildings, right? Mm -hmm. And so it was him and Method Man, and everybody protesting about this building, right? And so this little white dude who bought, you know, he's the developer, and they're like, you know, why are you guys protesting? He's like, because you guys are building this unaffordable housing in our in our in our community. And the man, and the white man says. Man, this building been abandoned for the last 30 years. How come you didn't buy it? This is a TV show. He says, this building been abandoned for 25 years. How come you didn't buy it? And that struck me. He said, how come he, how come he didn't buy it? How come, how come I didn't buy that? How come I didn't buy that, that neighborhood market? How come I didn't buy that donut shop? How come I didn't buy that cleaners? You know, but you got the mobile detailing shops. You know, how come I didn't buy that? One, for one thing, after the shock value had left me, I can't get a loan for a small business. You know, I ain't got no credit. I got bad credit. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so all this is designed to hold anybody back, especially black people. Oh, yeah. Right? So that's, this is my duty is to, okay, youngster, I want you to hold tight. Let me show you how to work this bread right here. So we're gonna look long term into the future. We gonna, I want you to look 10 years down the line. So if you're 20, by the time you're 30, you should have a quarter million dollars. If, if you continue to put a certain amount of bread into this thing every week and let it mature. You see what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And this is what, I, this is what I've done. Somebody who's been out, who, who was a D-boy a convict, parolee. This is what I. This is what I do now, you know. And so, that's why, um, you know, I, I'm 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 comfortable. It's necessary. And so it's about it's yeah. about it's about the education. And I never would have I never would have um. I never would have be where I'm at if I didn't have to go through the path. You know, especially like I said, meeting you, man. You deeper than the. What the, what the X Clan say? Deeper than the seafloor traveled by the mantis. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I didn't know you was as deep into our conversation the other day because I just you know I've only known you as an actor. I've, I I don't now I know you as my brother now. You know what I'm saying? Well 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 you kept your word, man. Mm -hmm. You know when we talked because we stayed in touch. Mm -hmm. You know we didn't talk to each other every day mm -hmm. or every month, but mm -hmm. we stayed in touch. Mm -hmm. You know, and and every time I looked up. You know, I'd see you posting things. I was mm. like, look at his brother. Yeah. He's doing it. He's doing this. You know, and 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 it was like, you know, I was just proud of you, man. I'm mm. proud of, of anybody that has a dream and goes out and pursues it, you know. You and, it. And it's, and, it's, and it's necessary because, um, um, like you were talking, one of the things that, that, that most kids don't learn, and I made sure I tried to teach my children this, and other children that, because I came in contact, I mentored a lot, mentored a lot of kids. Was that you know, you have to learn how to save money. You can't mm -hmm. spend it. Don't spend every day. You know, 
they not they don't know anything about a checking account, a banking account, investments. They not they don't learn these things. Mm -mm. You know, it's almost like a lot of times they just living. They they just like it. so many people are living from paycheck to paycheck. And that's and that's one of the things is is when I go back to my neighborhood, is you know when they see the stuff, the tangible stuff that I you know that I have because like I said, I'm I'm from right there. You know we see you know lunch tickets and stuff like that. You know. And I'm telling them, I'm like, give me five thousand, and and you know, and let me show you how to work that five thousand. They're like, I ain't got five thousand. You know, how much you got? You know, fifty dollars. Okay, when you when you get when you get five hundred, you know, let me show you how to do that. You know, sell. You know, because once you buy that that expensive chain, it devalues. Yes. You know, it, it's not worth fifteen hundred dollars. It's worth eight hundred. It's not an investment. It's not an investment. So let me show you the work this stuff right here, right? Um, but when somebody is, um, because I do understand with survival, when you're in survival mode every day, because I remember my mama, you know, me and my two sisters, you know, I remember some days she wouldn't eat, you know, because so we can eat, you know. You ever had potatoes every day? Potatoes and rice. I was blessed not to have to do that. Man. Yeah, we had potatoes and rice yeah. damn near every day, you know. So this is when you're in survival mode. You, you're not looking for ten years down the line. You're looking for, okay, make sure these bills is paid. You make sure this rent is paid by, you know, we're gonna be homeless. And I understand. I understand that. I ne I will never forget that. You know, I will never forget that. You know, uh, what it's like to survive versus live you know like i said in the morning time when my kids wake me up in the morning time they're secure you know and this is this is the kind of stuff that i want to give away i want i don't i'm not selling this stuff you see what i'm saying Ron? i want to give this stuff away but you got to stay focused you got to stay you got to stay focused goal orientated you know you got to stay hungry you got to want to live versus survive you know and this is what i'm getting from you right here the, sh the tv shows that's a bonus you know um i never you know i was at the right place at the right time it, it wasn't it wasn't my dream you know it, it was never my dream um it was something i was sitting back drinking a cup of coffee and somebody saw me hey you know the universe blessed me but now it's it's um I never forget, homie. I, I never forget. Well, you got to keep that with you, man. That's mm -hmm. that's part of you. One thing that I can say, you know, about myself, you know, yeah. I, I've I've been blessed to to own a few homes and mm -hmm. buy cars and all that, but I never misunderstood what my source was. Mm -hmm. And and I and you know, I'm not a, a religious person. I'm a spiritual person, and I definitely explain believe, that difference. I, I well well. You know, religion is, is organized. You know mm. what I'm saying, and, and they tell you in order to have a relationship with God, you got to do this, that, that, and that. Mm -hmm. And that's not true because mm -hmm. all of us have that power inside of mm -hmm. us. And I recognize God as my infinite source and my infinite resource. Mm -hmm. So I haven't gone without. Even when I jumped on that bus mm -hmm. and came out here to California with a hundred dollars in my pocket, because I lied, lied to my parents. I mean, my pop, for instance, when I was working at IBM. Mm -hmm. I was making more money than my father. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, and and just flipping back on this, this is another way that they were taking black men out of the household. Mm -hmm. My father worked at Ligon and Myers Tobacco Factory. Mm -hmm. By right beside him, a white man was doing the same job he was doing, but people don't realize my father was not getting paid the same thing this white man was getting paid. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand. It wasn't until the seventies. It wasn't until the seventies that they started passing bills that required equal pay. Mm -hmm. So my father not only worked at Lincoln Myers, he had two or three other jobs. So when I got to see him, it was at the dinner table, or he was coming in, going to bed, and going right back out, going to work. Or if you got in trouble, I'm you know, going to come see you. And, and every now and then, yeah. he got a chance, man, he might be able to throw football two or three times. And that mm -hmm. was it. But that made my day, just that that time. But, but they took him away, you know, mm -hmm. having to provide for his family. You see what I'm saying? You know, and that's what they've been doing constantly is taking our men away. Mm -hmm. And now they're taking mothers away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're taking every, it, it, it's like 
that was what kept slavery. People don't understand, our ancestors, when they came over here, mm -hmm. they weren't just bowing down and saying, hey, I accept this. They were fighting. Yes, they they were. were rebelling. Mm -hmm. Okay, they were having, they were revolting against, you know, uh, against this thing. And it had to, you know, for lack of a better term, be bred out of them. Man. You know, they were tortured. You know, they were terrorized. You know, and and all of that gets it, it gets transferred. I believe even today, mm -hmm. the effects of slavery are still on our people. You know what I mean? That's yes, still sir. there. Yes, you know, it's still it's still a part of you. You know, but you know, going back to to what we were talking about, you know, um, my father, you know he taught me values he taught mm -hmm. me you know i was fortunate like you said that yeah. you you know you didn't have i don't know if your father i think you i don't know him. okay never met him i was fortunate enough to have my mother and my father and then another uh, uh my relatives were also there too mm -hmm. and they pretty much my aunts raised us pretty mm -hmm. much because our parents were constantly working you know but but we had that support system and i noticed that that wasn't the same when I got older, when I came out to California, I noticed things were different. Uh, I remember somebody told me, you know, because I came from the South, I came from North Carolina, mm -hmm. and I've seen some things. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember when things took place. You know, we had we had riots, and there was there was times when I um, mean the Klan went down and into uh, the neighborhood, the mm -hmm. hood, or or to you know, and basically shot up a lot of people, killed a lot of people, and they got away with it. They walked away. Yeah. So the Black Panthers, everybody came in town in Greensboro, North Carolina. But our coach was like, nah, he, he made us all go to the gym so we couldn't get involved in this. But all kinds of atrocities were still going on. I got out here. The first time I was ever called a nigga mm. outside of somebody in my own race saying, what's up, nigga, something mm -hmm. like that, was when I got in California. Mm. And then I saw a different kind of racism. Okay? Mm. And I went, this is deep. And, and, and unlike yourself, many of, of the brothers I was running into, man, they weren't trying to mm. extend that hand. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You know what I mean? They, it was yeah, like competition, you dig, know? I can dig, It was I always competition. I'm like, dude, I'm not mm. competing with you. You can't do what I do, and yeah. I can't do what you yeah. do, you know? It's funny, you know? it's funny. <laughs> um, um, that's, you know, me, um, I had a little chip on my shoulder because every time I got casted, on a TV show, it was like they want me to play a, a, a drug dealer or, or, or a prisoner, and it's like the on, the only show I ain't got cast as a, as, as, a, as a criminal when I did a show with Selena Gomez on the Disney Channel. You know, I, I did a show with her on Disney Channel. Um, you know, um, but I I stopped I stopped doing that. You know, um, I laid it down. Um, I said, I'm going to rebel against the system because um, I don't want to continue. Yeah, I, I, I have a criminal past, no doubt, no doubt, you know. Um, 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 but you're not your past. No, I'm not you my past. Saying? You know, I get, I get, you know, it's not my thing. So um, I stopped I stopped doing that. Um, so I started doing other things, you know, and I come to find out that I started being a public speaker. You know, I, I've been all around the planet. Man, I've been, I, I've been to Egypt. You dig what I'm saying? You know, I got, I got sent, I got, I've been to Troy, where the Trojan horse was. I've been right there where Achilles fought um, Hector. I've been right there, you know? So um, I get a chance to do this kind of stuff, Ron. And um, it's 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 all about what you said when you were six years old, living the dream. I'm dreaming out loud. You dig what I'm saying? Um, so I'm gonna fast forward a whole bunch, of, whole bunch of stuff because this is more than what I expected. You dig what I'm saying? Um, when it comes down to it, um, on my birthday this year, there was a riot in Los Angeles, you know, on my birthday. Um, next day, man, um, I'm out I'm out there in the streets, you know, I'm protesting. Black lives matter. My life matters. Black lives matter. You know, I'm black. Black lives matter. And I've never seen it like this before. People ain't just, it ain't just black folks marching, it's everybody, everybody. marching, you know? Yeah. And um, I think that this change that's 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 on the, over the weekend, they shut downtown LA down. They're still riding up there, protesting up there in Portland, Oregon. Um, I think that this Black Lives Matter movement is here to stay until change. 
um, uh, until the s systemic racism is 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 complete. Um, but then again, I want you to comment on what I'm saying right now. We can march, we can protest, we can protest when the police put that knee in my neck. Put that knee in that man's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. We gonna protest this brutality. What pisses me off. They still do it. Not even that. What pisses me off. On 4th of July, 79 people got killed. Chicago. That look like me and you. In this one community. Black Lives Matter. They in Chicago, man. And they and they they killed 14 kids and out of 79 people over the weekend. And it's done by people that look like us. Oh yeah. And maybe the police, you know, I, I'm gonna put it out there. You know, it may be them doing that too, but right now it's um it's like we can march against the police, man, but let's march against each, you know, this um you know self hate. I know exactly. self hate, exactly. but you get to a point where you can turn a people on themselves. You have really accomplished. But why are we marching against? You know? Why are we marching against the police and, and and these laws to be changed because of Black Lives Matter? But we not marching against, you know, our, our my neighborhood. I can't walk. I can't walk my dog down the street at nighttime because somebody look like me gonna, is gonna shoot at me. And, and it's time. I, I Why really can't I do that? What you Why can't I do that? What you What you just said and bringing uh, and bringing Why can our viewers attention do that? to that? You know, that's what people need to understand. That you know, they got this term they call it black on black crime. You know, and they say that that most of the murders that are committed in our community are on each other. We have to learn to respect each other. We have to learn to love each other. We have to learn that we we mean something. You know, and I think so many of our youth. They be like, man, man, f that dude. He ain't yeah. from our. So many you know of our youth have that have gotten that mentality from growing up, again, in a situation where it was normalized. You know what I'm saying? He from that side of town. Mm. I'm from this side of town. Yeah. You know. You know. Hey, hey, I want that corner, so I'm gonna do what I need to get that corner. Cause you messing with my money. Okay. All right. Or you but, from so and so. And 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 with the influx of weapons that have been placed in, in our community, because I don't care what nobody says, man. These guns are coming from someplace, mm -hmm. you know, and they're not trying to pass any gun laws, you know. But you're right. We got to do something to stop this violence on each other. It's got to stop. These young brothers got to be woke up. Well, like I said, we can march against the laws. But when 79 people get killed over a weekend... That's something. That's deep. Black that's Lives Matter, right? Yeah. And and that's what I want to say is Black Lives Matter. And those who are pulling these triggers who are black and pulling that trigger on somebody else is black, they still lost. Most definitely. Most you got to wake them up. You know? And and that, that, to me, is the question. How do you wake these young brothers up who have this mindset, who are living in this mindset, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, I thought about the same thing when I told you I was working with these foster kids and these young boys were playing their funerals and the gangs were at war here. Mm. I'm like, how do you wake these young brothers up? What is it going to do to to make you understand? You know, because because I asked a young brother this one time. Mm -hmm. I said, why is it that you know white man come and do anything he want to to you and you ain't going to do nothing, but a brother step on your tennis shoes and you pull out a gun and kill him. It happened the other day on the news. And you know what this young man told me? Yeah. And this is deep. You know, he said, because I can kill a nigga and get away with it. Ooh. And I went, damn. Yeah. But that's a mentality. You know what I'm saying? You have to, you, you, to get a, 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 a people to turn on themselves, whether it's for money, whether it's for drugs, whether it's for territory that you don't own. You, you know, know what I'm you, saying? You, you, you may rent, but you don't own <laughs> nothing. <laughs> you don't own yeah. nothing. You know, I mean, how do you win those hearts and minds back? That that's a that's something that that, that we got to do. Because if you think about it, man, you know, uh, um, all the leaders 
And that's why we got to be leaders. That's what we're okay? doing now. Uh, but, but, but the leaders that we had were all taken out, man. The real leaders, mm -hmm. they were taken out. Mm -hmm. And who can we look to now? You know, we can't really look to these politicians, you know. No. But at the same time, you know, you look at our communities, man, and, mm -hmm. and you got which tripped me out when I started to realize that a lot of these older brothers are recruiting these youngsters and teaching them these kind of things. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking, you, you, and you know that's true, mm -hmm. man. I know, yeah. You know, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and I, I look at it like this, it's, it's, it's a moral issue too. At some mm -hmm. point in time, you know, I mean, how do we win our, it's, 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 it's this dialogue, Ron. It's, it's this dialogue, and it's it's what we're doing right now. You know, it's um, there's going to be some comments on here, and um, there's going to be a lot positive, and somebody might say something negative, and that means that they're still searching. So if they say something negative, it's, it's you know, they're still searching. So we're going to that negative feedback, we're going to shoot that, shoot back with positive, you know, and um, we got a lot of viewers, a lot of viewers, That's you know. Fantastic. Um, it's going, it's going to be a, it's going to be a good thing, man. Um, this show, um, that I've been blessed with, you know, to be a part of, um, you know, life after death is not just, it's, it's the whole, it's like that Phoenix rising. You, you see what I'm saying? And like I said, brother, um, you are way more than what, what they have you on, on, on TV or IMDB, um, all that. You are way more than that, man. Um. Um, we got a few minutes left before our time is up and, um, I'm going to encourage you, um, give our viewers something to take away with. Take your time. If I had anything to say, I'd say this, you know, I love my people tremendously and more than anything, I want my people to love each other. We have got to change our attitude towards each other. We gotta support each other. We have to lift each other up. You know, we have, like this brother said, we gotta stop killing each other. We gotta stop pulling each other down and holding each other. And that doesn't apply to everyone. But those of you who are doing that, you know you are doing that. And that that goes from everything. You know, stop selling death in your community. Stop selling drugs in your community. Understand that that you are being used. You are being used by a system that was set up to defeat you. And the only outcome for you, yourself, is going to be a negative outcome. It's time for us to be who God intended us to be, and that's spiritual beings. I had an opportunity to take a class with uh, uh, Bea Richards. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you... I know. And one Lovely thing day. she said to me, mm -hmm. and she said mm -hmm. to the class was this. She said, what's mm -hmm. the definition of a being? Perfect and lacking in no essentials. And I went, that's deep, okay? We are all perfect and lacking in no essentials, but we have to identify that within ourselves. You know, we can't look for somebody else to, to, to define who we are. It's up to you, and you have that opportunity to define yourself, just like you did. Mm -hmm. You know, you said, hey, I'm, I'm not my past. And that's what a lot of, lot of, what I want a lot of people to take away from this is that whatever you've done, you're not your past, you know. Your, your future is what's ahead of you, and that's what you need to focus on. Be the best person that you can be, the best being that you can be. Mm. Well, you heard it right there from um, Ronald Lawrence, Mr. Ronald Lawrence. Um, <laughs> are you working on anything right now? Is there anything coming up in the future? I'm working on his knee, brother. All right, that's <laughs> right, that's right. You know, so, yeah, he, um, um, I got like I said, I got a chance to, um, to work with you on, on some TV shows. Um, I'm blessed for that. I'm blessed to have. See, we going we develop that fit. We're developing. We're growing into that fifth. We're ten years, twelve years into our fifty year friendship. You see what I'm saying? Oh yeah. So I want to say thank you for that right there. And again, you know, to all our viewers, I want to thank um, Norman Steele um, for giving me this opportunity. And um, Charlemagne, if you're watching, um, we gonna do some good things over here, um, <laughs> little bruh. And um, and all the viewers, um, another episode of Life After Death. Also, if you want to get a chance to get my book, go to www.mrdj.com.
V E R R E T T dot com. Mr. DJ Verrett dot com. Pick up that book, an inside job. Um, thank everybody for watching. Much love, Brian. Peace. DJ Verrett, Life After Death. We out. It's time for the summer, baby.